Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Let's do it. In this video, you will see TIG welding 11 gauge aluminum outside corner joints in the 1F or flat position as well as the 2F horizontal position. They're really not much different. One's not any harder than the other. Technically, though, they are different positions, so we're going to do them both. Toward the end of the video, I'm going to do a little picture in picture shot of the foot pedal in action, tapering up and tapering off amperage. So let's get started. First thing, I'll run this fast because no one wants to see tack welding that much, but I'm getting three tacks on each one of these pieces um, because they are about 18 inches long and they'll try to open up in the middle and have gaps and things like that. And even those tacks can pop loose if you don't put a little extra filler rod in there. Aluminum tacks are just really weak. You, you can hardly get by with, with uh, light small fusion tacks on aluminum. On these corners I'm blasting fusion tacks, but I'm blasting them pretty good. And then I'll come back and add filler wire. Sometimes you have to, when you hold things with one hand, you have to not use filler wire, but you got to really be careful. Those tacks will crack if you're not careful. So after I get three tacks on each one of these joints, adding just a little bit of extra filler metal, I'm going to set it up and weld in the 1F position. I'm using these little uh, strong hand tools, I guess they're called V-pads, magnetic V-pads for a little uh, holder there. And I, I want to get comfortable here. That's the ABCs of welding, always be comfortable. Now these little holes in the table, my glove kind of drags on those. And usually I'll run a TIG finger on my palm because it's a lot smoother. In this case I needed to get up a little bit higher, so I made myself a little, you know, makeshift little track glide here. And it's really super smooth. So let's go. 1F flat position. We'll also do the 2F and as I'll say again, there's not much difference in them. I'm just, I'm only distinguishing because technically there's a difference. They're really, one's no harder than the other to do. 332 lanthanated electrode here with 332 4943 filler. That's a Hobart alloy. It's relatively new. Came out a few years ago. I got a, a good, a good little sample pack from my local welding supply store. I'm still using it. I like it. It's got uh, slightly better properties than 4043, flows good, and is can be heat treated. So I kind of use it wherever I would use 4043. All right, getting toward the very end here, and you can see me as I get to the very end, right about here I start letting off the foot pedal a little bit. You see it sunk in there a little bit. I didn't let off enough probably. Add a little wire back up to avoid leaving a crater, and that's that. Let's take a little look at it now and we'll also talk about some basic technique just not to skip over the obvious. Each one of those ripples is a freeze line. That's where you dab rod. So what you're trying to do is move the torch ahead at even increments and dab rod in even increments in the same amount and that's where you'll get some decent uniformity. Okay, let's do the the 2F horizontal now and see I'm I'm resting my, uh, my palm on a TIG Finger XL there and just sliding it right along the table. That makes for a really good slide, quite a bit smoother than the palm of the glove itself, which can kind of, again, hang up on those holes. Here's a little trick I learned from Roy Crumrine. When you've got a tack on the end, it might pop loose if, if the part's under load. Put, put a little tack inboard, then back up to the other tack, and then motor on. You avoid yourself some heartache that way. Once again, I'm trying to move the move the torch along roughly an eighth of an inch in, in even increments when I dab rod, trying to space my ripples as evenly as I can. Obviously they're not perfect, but in my mind I'm trying very intentionally to move an eighth of an inch each time I add rod. I'm trying to keep the rod in the argon, the, the tip of the rod in the argon, although there's a lot of forgiveness on aluminum because it, the rod just cools so quickly. It's uh, not nearly like stainless or something like that where it stays red hot and gets oxidized. So, But still, I'm trying to keep it covered with the argon, keep the weld puddle clean, all the while feeding the rod with my filler rod hand, trying to move the torch in even increments, trying to keep my arc length pretty close to the same. And incidentally, that ripple spacing is kind of a personal preference kind of a thing, and it also depends on the application. Like if you're going to blend something off where you don't want a bunch of high or low valleys and peaks and things like that, you may want to space your ripples a lot closer. It just depends on what the customer wants, what the job requires, and your personal preference. 
Let's take a look at the foot pedal action now. This is a Dynasty 280 once again. I'm using advanced square wave, 151 amps on the panel with a wireless foot pedal, which is awesome, by the way. So, here we go. I light up, initiate, initiate the arc. That happens right away. And I, I try to get a puddle going within about three seconds and get moving. That's kind of different with different alloys. But once I get it stabilized and the heat just about right, there's not a whole lot of movement with the foot pedal. Even though each little move of your foot can go up and down 10 amps or so, um, just not a whole lot of movement. That's another reason I don't like to set the machine on max because each tiny little movement makes a lot more difference. So I set it a little bit more than what I need. And once I get, get on a roll, it doesn't move a whole lot. If I go over a big tack or something, I like to have a little bit of extra amperage there. But normally, like I say, as I'm going along here, my foot's really not moving much at all, at least not on purpose. Might be drifting a little bit. I get to the end of the joint, start tapering off about two or three dabs away from the end, leave the rod in the puddle a little bit, back up, and that's about all there is to that. I use the number 8 Furic Pro Cup for this video, and not only does it, it provide really good gas shielding, but it really lights the way. It really helps you see where you're going, at least it does for me. If you're interested in learning more about that cup or my TIG Finger product, go to weldmonger.com. There's a bundle there for some savings. You will need an adapter kit for 17 and 26 style torches and 18 style torches. And the way to find out what's, what kind of torch you have, you just kind of go to the home page, scroll down, look for the adapter kit. And when you find it, just click on the adapter kit. and It's got a little guide there to sort of show you the difference between torches and basically the, the way you tell is is by the collet body hardware so i've got these little you know these little infographic things here if your torch has these you have a 9 or 20 style torch those little 7 8 inch long collet bodies are a 9 or 20 these longer ones that are closer to 2 inches that means you have a 17 or an 18 or a 26 and you will need this adapter kit in order to make this cup work again that's weldmonger.com that is my online store that's how I support these videos. Thanks for watching.